Conditional statements may not be the proper way to deal with logic branching. I know this may sound crazy, but <laughs> let me explain that. Well, if you need your code, your object to adapt its behavior based on whatever object type it is interacting with. So let's say if you are interacting with a crate, pick up the crate. If you are interacting with a player instead, hit the player, attack the player. If you are interacting with a cannon, light up the cannon and fire it. Well, based on which type of object the the object in, in itself, so let's say the enemy, will have to adapt its behavior. So you have if statements or let's say switch statements or even match statements, uh, saying stating which type of behavior it should perform based on which type of object it is interacting with. Well, the major problem with that is that every time you have a new interaction, so let's say you want to create a bomb behavior where the, the enemy pick up the bomb and throw at the player um, when it is when it interacts with a bomb. You have to create a new statement there. So you have to enter the code, modify the code, break the open close principle, and then save the code. Every time you do that, you are running the risk of adding a new bug on your code. So ideally, you have your enemy behavior set you close it, you put a lock on it, and you don't modify it anymore. If it is working, you don't mess with it. But as the game progresses, it's very common that we will have new types of interactions on the game. As I said, I want to add a bomb picking and throwing behavior. How can we do that without modifying the base class? This video is sponsored by the Platform Essentials Cookbook. Learn how to create platformer games by implementing 12 tested solutions for reliable code bases. Grab your copy right now for $9.99, link in description. Well, to solve this issue, the strategy pattern proposes that you create a family of interchangeable algorithms and pass them in runtime to the user class, known as the context class, allowing it to adapt its behavior based on whatever strategy that we pass to it, dynamically in runtime. To illustrate this pattern, let's think about a real-world analogy. Let's say that you got invited to be the cook of a famous restaurant by the master chef himself. In the invitation, they say that you don't need to bring any food, any ingredients, any utensils, nor pen. Just be there at 7 p.m. You got a little bit confused because you don't know this restaurant, uh, what kitchen, the, the cuisine that they follow, if it's Arabic, Italian. Mexican, you don't know anything about it, but you go there because you're courageous, right? You arrive there and you see that there is a note saying follow the instructions, but there are no instructions to be followed. As you look around, you see that there are all the ingredients there, the, the utensils that you need to cook, the pan, and the missing plus is already set. So you literally just have to wait and see how things will unfold. As the first customer arrives, Instead of giving you the name of the meal that they want to eat that night, they give you all the instructions to cook the meal. And as you follow the instructions, you cook the perfect meal and deliver it to them. And they are very happy because you follow the instructions exactly as they want you to do. This is how the strategy pattern works. The client class provides the user class, in this, in this context, the context class, the proper strategy to interact with it. To implement the strategy pattern, all we need to do is to create an abstract strategy class with a reference to the context class itself, because we need to access some data and some methods from the context class. Remember, the strategy is supposed to represent a snippet of the context class code, so it's supposed to know everything about the context. And after that, we provide an interface method that the context class can use to execute any strategy. We typically call this method execute. After that, we can implement the strategies by inheriting from this abstract strategy class and overriding its execution method. Inside this execute method, typically what we do is to extract the algorithms that we had on the context class before we implement the strategies and inject them on these new strategy classes. So here is where the, the algorithms, the different behaviors that the context can have will be individualized and encapsulated on their own class. 
Then in the context class, we are going to start by cleaning up all the conditional statements that we had previously, because now we are going to use stretches. We don't need conditional statements anymore. Then after doing that, we are going to get a reference to the strategy that this context will use in this interaction. This will be provided by the client class in the next step. But from for now on, we just need to know that we are going to get a, an instance of the strategy that uh, the context will use. After that, we are going to inject this context instance in the context member variable of this strategy, because this is what the, the strategy will use as its context. After that, we can inject any other dependencies that the strategy requires. For instance, in this case, we should pass the area that was interacted by the, the enemy, and then we can execute the strategy. And this is everything that we need to do. We can basically just call it a day, close up this, this class, because we are not going to work in this method anymore. It's closed. Everything that we need to do uh, from now on to extend this behavior is to create new strategies that are going to be executed. So the missing piece in this three points interaction is the client, right? We already have the context, we already have the strategy, and we are only missing the client. Well, the client class basically just have to just has to provide the proper strategy to the context class, and to do that, it stores a strategy uh, instance. In my case, in my implementation, I first Point, I, I export a variable to point out to the file that will load the GD script that represents this strategy. And then using the onReady keyword, I load this file and create a new instance of it. I use the onReady here because otherwise it will take the default value. And uh, it by using the onReady keyword, we deserialize the proper value from the whatever scene that we are loading. And it will take the proper strategy instead of the default one. And this close up this three point interaction. And from now on, if I want to create new behaviors for my enemy class, I just have to create new strategies and attach them to whatever object I want the enemy to interact with. Pretty simple. Well, that's it. If you like this video, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to get more of it and to help us grow and reach out to more indie game developers so everyone can make better games. If you like this kind of content and this format that I'm testing out, I really enjoyed making it, but your feedback is very important for me so that I can improve the type of content that I create for you. Please leave a comment below talking about what you liked, what you disliked and how I can improve it. That's it, thank you so much for watching, keep developing and until the next time, see you there.